What's up guys, it's Punchy, and I just spilled water all over myself. Well anyway, today we're going to be talking about Dark Sigil Knight. It's going to be very similar to my Sigil Knight video I made a couple weeks ago and talking about how they match up against other classes and races and what to do if you build one. This is going to be the second installation in the Gaia Guide series, so I'm going to be trying to cover all the classes in Gaia. As always, if you enjoy my content, make sure to leave me a comment and a like, and subscribe if you want to see content like this in the future. Dark Sigil Knight, or Wraith Knight, is the chaotic version of Sigil. It's gone through several phases of being amazing and mediocre, but in its current state, it's somewhere in the middle. Runes are like the center of the class, and it maxes out your mana while giving a 1.25 times damage boost for your melees for about 25 seconds. Like Sigil Knight, it's a heavy hitting class with little speed, but it does have the additional mobility with runes. Although this is the case, it has a relatively slow swing speed and climb speed. Similar to that of the Sigil Knight, Wraith Knight isn't perfect, so I'll do my best to explain my opinion on how it performs against different type of classes. Sigil Knight is the orderly counterpart to Dark Sigil Knight, and it's very similar in a couple ways. Of course, they're both sword classes, but the horizontal mobility that sigils lack, the dark sigils can make up for with more. Runes are what make this possible, and they're what dark sigils get from gripping somebody with soul rip. By gaining extra defense, damage, and infinite mana charge for a limited time, it's pretty easy for them to get around on the ground. When fighting sigils, the black flame charge won't do too much damage to them due to their good health, but the range you get with a dark flame burst is an advantage in my opinion. But be careful, because if you miss any of your hard hitting moves, expect to be hit with a sigil combo. Again, there's no hard countering in this matchup, but I believe that Dark Sigil's hard-hitting moves can beat a Sigil combo if they're played correctly. Both of them are the tankiest classes in the game. Sigils don't have too much to change up their game, but there are a couple things to keep an eye out for. Any competent Sigil that has played the game for, like, I don't know, more than a week will have a Stolen Sword, which gives them a faster swing speed, as well as White Flame Charge. If you're a Dark Sigil Vampire, like many are, Make sure you're avoiding White Flame Charge because they will shred you regardless of your crazy health amount. Fortunately for Dark Sigils, they also make quick work of Vampires. Many Vampire Sigils will be faster due to their increased speed of Vampirism, but when you hit them with Black Flame Burst, they'll be at a major disadvantage. If you're using your Black Flames correctly, it shouldn't be an issue when shutting down Vampire Regen. Some problematic races that Sigils tend to play are Dazin, Fish, Construct, Hasselden, Dinakari, and Metal Scrum. Of course, these dodging races are annoying for everything that hits slow and hard, but they won't be able to dodge your flame burst, not including Morvid Flock. Constructs are also pretty well rounded as any class, so expect to see these on Sigils. Some races that increase the damage for Sigils can be Hasseldens and Dinakaris, which can combo even harder. Another note that I've really just taken away by playing the game is that many Dinakari Solons don't really have their white flame charge because they need Chaotic to get their runes, taking it away from them. Lastly is the second tankiest thing in game besides a Metal Scroom Dark Sigil, a Metal Scroom Sigil Knight. Again, it's tough to fight with just your sword, so try to make use of your spells and Dark Flame Burst to deal with them. That's all the scary races that are meta for Sigil, but as a side note, if you encounter a Lannis Sigil, they will slow you down, but with your infinite mana and Flame Burst, it should be manageable. Again, Blacksmith does have the ability to fight, but you don't always see them fighting in Gaia. Many of them are spell reliant to combo up after they use their hammer or shards, so Black Flame should prevent them from doing anything crazy with something like Snap Snarmander or Snap Viribus infinite combos if they have those spells. You won't be doing too much sword damage to them if they have Silver Guard on, but your Flame Burst as well as a bunch of Tomas spam should do the job correctly. Similar matchup if you're a Sigil, but if you need to run away, it is totally possible since you do have access to runes. As mentioned earlier, watch out for Vampire Blacksmiths because they most likely will know how to fight as their class. Not a big fan of Dinakari Blacksmiths that are Vampires or Valanis because they can do a ton of damage without having to aim with those shards. Although, some of these things can be avoided by faster classes, Dark Sigil Knights aren't always that fast unless they have runes pop. Luckily, you won't see many combat Blacksmiths out in Gaia, so that's an upside. Today is patch day, and we actually got a pretty good one. Abyss Walker got changed to be viable in this new meta, and I do believe that it actually has a chance against Dark Sigil. Previously, I had written that Abyss Walkers could do nothing now that they, you know, they don't have Tomeless, they can't block anything, but now they actually have a chance. 
They can block spells, but Dark Eruption will still go through their block. I think they now have a fighting chance, and this is pretty much a fair matchup. I haven't seen many clips on how this is, but I do believe that it is fairly balanced. Again, I had previously written about how races with a built-in spell were really good for Biswalker, but now I believe dodge races are in the new meta, as well as Hasselton and Din and Carry. Without having to need a built-in spell, they have a mana shield now and are pretty decent on their own. If the Abyss Walker is a vampire, it's good for you because Black Flame does crazy damage to anything that can't walk in the sun. As far as artifacts, the only thing that Abyss Walkers can really get is a Lannis, which I believe can block a Dark Flame Burst. Again, it's more of a buffer or something to increase the time before they lose because all they have to do is get hit once. Even if they have a spell built into their race, as soon as their mana is negated, they can't really do it again. Earlier, I said something about how Abyss Walker could probably never beat a Dark Citron Knight, but um, now it's more balanced. So, yes, that's how it's going to be. Katana wielding samurais are an interesting case in the Dark Sigil matchup. Personally, I believe that they're actually pretty strong, but I'm surprised because I never see any of this class around in Gaia. Of course, it's not as meta as a Faceless or Dragon Slayer right now, but I would love to see more videos about this class. As many of you know, samurais are fast and they throw out a lot of moves. I'd say that Dark Sigil is at a disadvantage in this matchup if the samurai knows what they're doing. If they're Tomeless, it can pretty much shut down some of your spells and flame bursts, but they're also really crazy in the corner. The only downside they really have is to change to their spells because it's an animation that gets in their way. I think I'll have to play more of this matchup to see who really wins, but right now I think that Samurai have the speed advantage in this case. Also, that auto-aim move is very good. Dazin, Fisherin, and Din and Carry Samurais are the best races for this class, in my opinion, and are definitely worth looking out for. With their increased speed and dynamic playstyle, dodge races are perfect for this class because it's very hard to land a move on this enemy. As a Dark Sigil, you aren't the fastest, so it may be harder to get rid of all the dodges at once. Another thing that is definitely scary is Din and Carry Samurais due to their speed and damage. With max mana, charge, and insane damage, it's pretty annoying to deal with. I guess for damage, Hasselton could do the same thing. In the case for vampires, I don't really see many vampire samurais because the extra knockback can be a detriment to some of their combos, but you won't see any free wins with black flames against vampire samurais. Lastly, I think the only good artifact that a samurai can really have would be a Lannis because they can get close with their iframes. Dark sigils don't feel bad about running from these cracked samurais. Faceless is very strong and very capable of one-shotting anything in the game. I don't really know what to say about macro users, but the typical Faceless is enough to take down anything as well. Dark Sigils are slower in this matchup, but they're able to do good damage on Faceless. Faceless has fast speed and large damage potential, but they also have a small health bar. Using this as an advantage, Dark Sigils can do about one-third of their health with a Rune Berserk Flame Charge. Something good that works with Dark Sigil is Black Flames on Faceless. Without their dodges, they are much slower, so it could be easier to catch them. Without macro talk, I think that Faces has a slight advantage over Dark Sigil just by design, but DSKs can definitely turn the tides and fight back. Faces has a lot of options to improve or change up their playstyle, so there will be a lot to cover here. First, I'll talk about races. The best races for current Faces players have got to be Dazin, Fisherin, Dinakari, and Construct. You can't really go wrong by playing any race as a Faceless, but these are what I believe to be the most effective. Of course, these slippery bugs can get into any fight and leave whenever they want, so being something that can dodge is very useful. Dinakari is also really great for mobility and damage, but I think the stuff that does the most for this class would have to be the increased defense when a rune is popped. Lastly, Construct is very strong for running and healing, and fighting a faceless with two lives is not what most rogue players want to do. Next is another option for vampires. Some faceless players choose to play vampires, but black flames should be able to get them into a situation where they don't want to fight. Next, some facelesses have Snarvender, and it's stupid because if they do a combo on you, then Snap Snarve is coming next. This could do your entire health bar no matter what you are, and honestly, I think it's a bit broken. Red alert, if you see any of these guys, you probably won't really have a chance to run away if they hit you with a combo. As mentioned previously in the other video, Lannis on faces is what's really meta over a spider cloak, so if they've got one, it could be pretty hard to fight against. To counter this, try popping a rune and spell spamming to use up their Lannis and put it on cooldown.
Shinobi is another one of those mosquito annoying classes that everyone has to deal with. They're pretty fast, but have nowhere near the damage capability as Faceless, and have a little more health. As a Dark Sigil, I believe you'll be punished less if you mess up an attack on a Shinobi, and you should have an easier time to fight opposed to a Faceless. Of course, dagger classes are pretty difficult for anything that is, isn't super fast, so I say that this matchup is fair. Some Shinobis are not worth fighting based on what race they have. Due to the fast nature of the class, many meta players will choose to pick Dazin or Fisherin because of the nice dodges they get and can regain quickly. As a Dark Sigil, your Black Flames will go through dodges on fish, but your slow swings may be a bit of an issue. If you're using Tomas with a rune, it should be pretty easy to combo even a Shinobi with dodges. An annoying class to deal with is Construct Shinobi. In the past, they were able to resurrect twice, but it's cut down just to one revive. The ability to grapple up and heal is pretty frightening as well, but if you deal enough damage to them, it will be pretty difficult for them to win in a fight. Starvenger Shinobis are again like Faceless with a spell. Expect them to spam the snap, and why wouldn't they? It combos well and does insane damage, so watch out for that. Luckily, because of Dark Sigil Black Flames, they shouldn't always have mana to do any Toma stuff or run away. Lastly, another thing to note is that you can still destroy Shinobis that are Vampire, and Lannis is pretty counter to you. Believe it or not, I have not really seen a Shinobi with a Spider Cloak, because it's not really that great. Not many of them use it anymore, I guess. Spy is a class that's pretty much used for its passives and nothing else. If you see somebody using their rapier more than Tolmus, they probably have not had the eye-opening realization that Spy is not designed well. Regardless, if a Spy is using their rapier or spells, Dark Sigil is a great counter to them. Of course, the Spy is very fast, but without mana, they're like a mage with some annoying passives. Most meta spies I see today are very reliant on Tomeless, so when that's shut down by Black Flames, they kind of just shut down mentally. This is not really a shot at spy players, it's just more of a commentary on how spy needs to be changed. 9 out of 10 times, a competent Dark Sigil beats a competent spy. Spy needs help, and many of the races in Rogue Lineage work well for this class, but some are more effective than others. I'd say the ones that work the best are Tazin, Fish, and Metal Scroom. In this matchup, anything that can keep Black Flames off the Spy are what will be the most countering to your class. Construct is pretty nice, but is complementary on pretty much anything. I would like to explain how I think that Metal Scroom is good as well, just due to the damage reduction of the race, and as well as the Spy's Silver Guard. It's not really specifically good against a Dark Sigil, but I believe it's one of the best races for this class. Those with Lannis can be pretty dangerous, actually, because they won't waste an opportunity to use their spells. They're kind of like drug addicts, and if they use their rapier, they're kind of like regressing back to normalcy. If they're a rare Fair Frozen spy, they may be very confident in their skill. They may not be good, they may be very confident. It's kind of like a um, Lime Green Scout. They want to make Fair Frozen spy a meta, so I'm assuming they want to do some crazy combo and have you clip it. You don't really see a lot of Spider Cloak spies around, just because the class armor is very good. In my findings, I've found that an Edict Spy is actually more common to find it than a Spider Cloak Spy. Snap Starmander Spies are going to be scary because they can combo slow classes with Needle's Eye after, or even another spell. Of course, this is pretty good for Spy, but to shut down any spell play, you need to use their Black Flames correctly. Vampire Spies are not something you see all the time, but in the case you see one, it may be difficult to deal with. The reason why I say it's harder than other classes is the mobility of the Double Jumps and Silver Guard damage reduction. In my opinion, Dark Sigil still wins against the Vampire's Spies by design, but a good Vamp could perform well. Some dumb Spy strats that are being revived are the Interrogate into Gate thing. Yeah, there's no counterplay if they drop you into the Void or something. My opinion will still be favored towards Dark Sigil in this matchup, no matter what stuff the Spy has. Deep Knight vs Dark Sigil Knight is an interesting matchup that has a lot of outcomes. Usually, I would say that Deep Knight beats Dark Sigil due to how their kit works. Personally, I believe that the combo potential, health, and healing capability is very strong on Deep Knight against Dark Sigil Knights. Of course, the Light Piercer into Chain Pull combo will do a ton more damage and usually will result in an Impale injury. Impale makes the person affected more susceptible to damage, so greater health, the greater the negative effect. Because Dark Sigil has the most amount of health in game, they're going to be screwed more when you're fighting them. Based on combos alone and healing, do not mess with Deep Knight if you are a Dark Sigil. Deep Knight is pretty scary, and I don't like getting hit with Chain Pull as much as the other dude, but there are some other things that make the spider thing even stronger. So yeah, if they're Dinakari or any dodge race, have fun dealing with this matchup. 
It's almost as annoying as a druid in my opinion. If they have snarve or something, which I've rarely seen, you'll just lose harder. Dragon Slayer, with or without a Fair Frozen, is a good class. It can easily go toe to toe with Dark Sidronite. I'd call this an even matchup in most situations. Taking damage into consideration, they both do a considerable amount. Range, they both have moves that do big AoE and can be punished if missed. Health, Dark Sigil wins in this scenario, but it's made up for in the speed category. Having Wingsword gives Dragon Slayer more vertical mobility over Dark Sigil Knight. Hypothetically, this fight could go either way. Naturally, any artifact using D-Slayer would have a decent advantage over any normal DSK. If this particular Dragon Slayer has a Fair Frozen or a Snarvender, the fight may be in its favor. Especially against a Fisherman with Snarve, this could be an issue. Dark Sigils have low DPS and can't bypass Fisherman dodges that easily. Paired with the extra damage, any DSK would have a hard time. Then again, a Dizen Evamp DSK would beat most normal D-Slayers, having the ability to dodge, Spear Crusher, Snarvender, and even Sub-Zero Strike. Oni is a pretty good counter for slow, hard-hitting classes like Dark Sigilonite. I'd call it an 8 out of 10 win for Oni, especially with its new recent armor buffs. Dark Sigil Knights can't really do much against Demon Step and iframes, and paired with the high damage and the ability to move through enemy attacks, most good Onis can beat a good Dark Sigil Knight. The only time the Oni would suffer is if it gets hit, because without mana they can't really do anything with Snap Ignis combos, and they have minimal health. Like any class, a good Dark Sigil Knight may be able to turn the tides. Due to the lower health pool on Oni, if a Dark Sigil gets a few good combos off, it can win. Oni with artifacts and a good race like Dazin, Fisherin, or Denikari make this even easier. If they have crazy snaps such as Snap Snarvender or they do combos with Snap Ignis, this could be really difficult for Dark Sigils to do anything against. Dragon Sage Bozo's really just taking the L right now, to be honest. Dark Sigil Knights are probably all on suicide watch with the current nerfs. A good Dark Sigil beats most Dragon Sages, and before the nerf, I'd say that Dark Sigil Knight had the advantage anyway. Black Flames cancel out mana, and Dragon Sages are heavily reliant on Tomeless. On top of that, they have pretty garbage health with or without Spider Cloak. I would say that the most skilled D Sages can probably infinite combo a DSK. Guy and D-Sage would make up for the lack of HP though, if they can pull off any combos it doesn't really matter. Fisher and D-Sage with Snarvender may come the closest because it has damage and it does dodges. Bard has no attacking power so Dark Sigil can win in any type of fight against it. Of course, unless they have Snarvender or something stupid like a Fair Frozen, you might as well not even be fighting a Bard, you could be a Freshie or a Spy or whatever. Okay. Bards are kind of like the kids in the back of your class listening to music. I mean, they don't really do anything, but like they're just they're just vibing and jamming to their own shit. Fighting a druid as a dark sigil is worse than pulling teeth. No offense to druid players, you know how strong your class is. Dark sigil health, well, that doesn't really matter because of poison percent damage on Snap Floresco. Dark sigil speed, well, that also doesn't matter because half the moves druids can do can sell you long enough to make pancakes. Well, believe it or not, Dark Sigils actually do decent against Druids. Because they can get rid of all those spells they are always spamming, Black Flames does come in handy. The only good thing that they have is Black Flames and their Dark Eruption. It does better against worse mage classes, but it's alright against Druid. Druids with Philo Stones are very difficult to fight as anything and are even more annoying if you are any of the following races. Construct, Fish, and Dinicary are what I believe are the most annoying races to fight as a Dark Sigil on Druid. Fish dodges negate Black Flames, so it will not be disabling the spell casting for Druids. Construct is great because they can move while drink, which is a large part of Druid play, so that will be annoying to deal with. And lastly, Dinicary has infinite mana and increased damage, which will do half your health if you get hit with Vines or a Accent Surge or anything like that. Druids don't really need Summoner, but if they do have it, you might as well Comet Log because you are going to lose a life anyway. Illusionist is not that great in the matchup against Dark Sigil. With Black Flame Charge, it can totally disable their mana and do tons of damage to them. They aren't that tanky and half of their moves aren't that great for combat. If a Chaotic class is Orderly, the Orderly Barrier Dominus combo does not work at all. 
If they have zombies out, they will be able to do a combo that can kill a Dark Sigil, but it will be the only conceivable idea on how a regular Illusionist will ever win against a Dark Sigil. If the Illusionist you're fighting has a Philo Stone, they will be more annoying to deal with, but don't expect anything crazy unless they have God Spells. If they have Starmitter, it doesn't really matter what class they are again, so they could probably just kill you. Most mages don't go Vampire, so no easy wins here. Ultra Necromancer is not the best class unless you have a Philo Stone or a Snarmander. It's a very similar experience to Illusionist, but the only attack moves they have are specific to their class. Sakara is pretty much the only thing they can do once Black Flames are applied to them without spamming zombies. If they auto-click with their Shriekers, you, even with Dark Sigil Health, will most likely die. Not much I can really say, because the Necro is pretty much nothing without zombies, but it's only really annoying if they're Dazin or Fish because they can actually dodge you. Dark Sigil Knights win against both Necros if they don't use their bounds. Finally, we have arrived at the end of our matchup section. As I said, most of these races and classes, um, you know, they do pretty well against Dark Sigil, but I do think Dark Sigil is balanced enough to be able to fight against it. I'll be showing you my opinion in a small little um, chart I made similar to the last one, and it's going to be talking about what classes you want to be fighting and what races you want to be as a Dark Sigil Knight. When I make my Dark Sigil Knights, I want to either be a race that's tanky or something that has dodges. What I would recommend is going Vampire on a Dark Sigil Knight because it's going to be very good in the long run for fights that last, I don't know, longer than 10 minutes. I said Talorum is very difficult to deal with if you're a vampire, but I'd say as Dark Sigil, you're going to be disabling their mana anyway. And for the artifact of choice, I would recommend Atlantis. There's not much you can really do with a Spider Cloak or Fair Frozen on this class, so I'd say that's your best pick. On to the tier list. Here is a l brief little chart I made up. It's very similar to the Sigil Knight one, where I'm going to be talking about how Dark Sigil Knight performs. And as you can see, it has different rankings for each class. On the left-hand side, it says classes. This is going to talk about how well Dark Sigil fights against other classes. And on the right-hand side, it says races, which are what races you want to be as a Dark Sigil Knight. It is ranked from S to D, S being, I want to fight this class all the time, it's very good for me, and D being, this is bad, get me out of this situation, I do not want to be fighting this class. There was a couple changes that happened today, so I will have to update my list. And starting in S rank, Bard, it's very easy to beat as a Dark Sigil Knight. They have no attacking power. They can't even disarm you if you have a rune popped. Illusionist and Necro are in here because they they do not have much fighting power with their class, especially if um, Black Flames is applied to them. They cannot do anything. Necromancer is also A tier because I'm assuming they're not going to be using zombies, but Abyss, um, Dark Sigil has a lot to deal with zombies such as Black Flames, Dark Eruption, and Homeless Spam, so I think this is a justifiable reason. Now we will be moving on to A tier. This is something that you want to be fighting, but it's not the best of the best. I previously had Abyss Walker in the same spot as Dragon Sage, but I had changed it around because of the addition of the Mana Shield. Of course, Dragon Sage is very reliant on mana, and if you get that disabled, it's not good for you. Lightning Punches, Lightning Dashes, Fire Punches, as well as um, Monk Shield and Tomus Spam, that is being all being disabled whenever you're getting hit by Black Flames. Same with Spy. Spy isn't that great with its weapon, but when it gets its mana disabled, it can no longer do spells and stuff like that. Blacksmith is also an A tier just because it's more of a utility class. Its main focus is not for fighting. It isn't that great when dealing with classes that are actually suited to fight. B tier is right in the middle. B stands for balance. Definitely think this matchup is pretty balanced. Everything in here goes both ways. Abyss Walker previously was A tier, now is B tier. It can block some of the moves. It can definitely block a Tomeless. I think it's actually kind of a solid powerhouse against different classes now, but I think it will have to be a balanced matchup until I can see further. Shinobi. Shinobi's not the best. Not really the most tankiest. It, I mean, it does damage. It's good as a dagger class, but I think it could be a balanced matchup against a Dark Sigil. Dragon Slayer and Sigil are very similar to Dark Sigil uh, itself. I think their damage outputs and mobility are very similar as well as their range. So I think this matchup is pretty balanced in my opinion. I would like to see more clips of Dark Sigils fighting these classes, but um, with a fair frozen nerves, I think that Dragon Slayer is no longer one of the top classes in the game. Moving on to C tier, we have our faster classes as well as our most annoying class, I think. Uh, 
Katana is pretty fast as well as Faceless. They put out a lot of damage, they move fast, they can get around very quickly, and are able to do a, a lot of combos. I think these are kind of harder for Dark Sigil to fight, and Druid's on here because it is the best mage class. It actually got nerfed today where you can block Snap Fruiting if you're able to block it, and I think that's really great. I really do think that it is definitely worthy of a nerf, but I did put it in C, class, C tier instead of the other mages because it is the strongest mage. Moving on to D tier, I was trying to think up things that were kind of difficult for Dark Sigil to fight. I believe that Deep Knight and Oni are the hardest classes for them to deal with, just due to the fact that they have high damage output and are very good at combos. Deep Knight isn't the best class in the game, but I do think that it is very good against Dark Sigil. It's able to apply Impale, which can disable healing, as well as do percent damage and remove some health on um, our big classes that are tanky, such as Dark Sigil Knight. Oni is very good because it can get in close, it can pretty much dodge everything that it needs to dodge, and it can do an insane amount of damage, so I believe these are the harder classes for Dark Sigil to deal with. Now we're going to be moving on to the right hand side of the chart, and it's going to be races. These are the races you want to be if you are a Dark Sigil Knight. This is um, ranging again from S to D, S being the best race, D being not so great, doesn't help that much. So we're starting off strong with a dodge race, which is Dazin, gets 10 dodges and ESP. Pretty much good on anything, I'd say it's very good on a Vampire Dark Sigil Knight, very solid. Fisherman, you get free dodges without a day requirement, and you can get Dissolve at day 15, not really much to say, and that you also get a um, secondary buff to your Snarmander. If you're going to be like a Vind or um, Fisherin, you get this buff, 1.25 or something along the lines, or it's 0.5 buff to Snarvender, pretty good. Slower class, you want dodges. Metal Scrum will also be an S tier because it is extremely tanky and it has very, very good damage resistance. You can also go to mirrors and repair or decompose if you need to, and the exhaust is pretty nice to get out of combos since your mobility is kind of limited. Next, we have Casperin. You get 4 lives with your Slash Resistance, and you also get 50% Flame Resistance on Day 15. Pretty good, because many of these Guide Dwellers, they'll want to be freezing you to death or using Burning Spells to take you out. But I'd say they're very good, and it's pretty nice to spam with Runes your um, Respier, which is actually faster than normal Ignis. Moving on to A tier, we're going to go to Dinakari. Having runes is a staple for Dark Sigil Knight already, but their power is buffed when paid, paired with his class. Instead of having a 1.25 damage buff, you actually get 1.5 damage buff. Pretty nice, pretty good for progression. Um, yeah, overall it's pretty good. Morvid. Morvid's also an A tier. Flock is essentially free. You get a pretty much a Lannis, which is great for escaping Oni or Faceless combos and running back to Mirrors. And I'd like to say that the fall damage resistance is pretty nice because Dark Sigil does not get any fall resistance. Also in A is Hasselden. Last stand paired with rune damage is crazy, allowing you to deal very high damage. It stacks with spells and snarve. It it's even stacks with spells like snarve and Virbus, and I think that bloodline is the same. It, you can even return to Hall of Mirrors to avoid being grips when it runs out, so I'd say it's pretty nice. Dolhan. Dolhan's kind of rare, and luckily, they actually get something that's good. It's a good risk for Dark Sigil Knight, because it gets infinite hunger, and the pumpkin grenade is very good for comboing into Dark Eruption very very good for combos if you right click and combo into the pumpkin grenade it's it's actually pretty solid good for chanting into spells or dark eruption last we, lastly we have in a tier our construct so constructs very solid just because you can drink health potions you can go back to the mirror and health potion up you can drink feather feats which again they don't have fall resistance but the main thing that it does have is a it has a revive although it doesn't give you as much buffs as Hasselden, it's still another life, so I'm going to put that in um, A tier. Moving down to B tier, we're going to start with Gaian. Gaian armor upgrades give you more health and regular sigil and at, you know basic climb speed, but it's not that great. It adds more mobility to the class, which is good, but it's not something outstanding. The repair is also pretty nice, and I'd say it's not bad. Navarin, Navarin is not as good as Dark Sigil as you may think. You can copy Silver Guard or Hyper Body. But, you know, it's not as much as this damage resistance you get as a Metal Scroom. Pretty good, though, if you want to be tanky. And, actually, the Mod Race, or Lich, or whatever it may be, it's actually in B tier. It's not terrible. You have some boosted HP, Poison Immunity, Insanity Resistance, 
injury resistance, temper immunity, and iron body. That sounds like a lot, but most of these things you can actually get. The ones you are really going to be, you know, thinking about in combat are insanity resistance. You're pretty much immune to illusionists. You are poison immune. That means druids can't really touch you. And you're immune to injuries. So no Sierra is only going to stun you. The main one, I'd say, for Dark Sigil Knight would be the cold resistance. People want to freeze you. People want to freeze you if you're tanky, especially in Gaia. And I'd say pretty good if you want to just shrug this off as this mod race. Of course, if you're not a mod, you're, you ain't getting this thing. Next we have um, in B tier is Castellan. I'd say that Castellan's pretty good because you get two snaps. You get an increased charging of mana, which you know doesn't matter that much if you have runes, but you get increased damage on some of your spells. If you want to have Snap Ignis or Snap Virubis, it's pretty solid if you don't want to lose any health. Nice touch to the class. Moving on to C tier, we're going to go to, um, you know, a little bit crappier, some races here. So starting off weak, we have Vind. The Vind speed boost is pretty nice on top of the rune buffs, but, oh, so you actually are pretty fast. You're going to be actually very fast as Vind, but again, Vind is not as good as it used to be. You cannot reflect the stuff that it could previously. I'm going to make a whole video on why Vind is so bad now, but just know it's not the best prevents you from going vampire but it does give you a snarmager boost that's that's all ashen c tier not very good because um thing is you have to get very very close to get your ashen shoulder throw off and there's not much you can really combo into you could do a combo into action surge but i don't think it's that great of a combo to do not the best i'd say azale's good you get um higher damage on snapping this which you'll probably already have since you're a dark sigil you can gate back to mirrors for a quick escape. You can pretty much go anywhere on the map, which is nice. And, but the really bad part is you can be frozen to death. People know that you're tanky if you're a Dark Sigil. That means they're gonna freeze you. If you're an Azale, only takes two. Not the best. Madration here is, there's no real point to be a Madration Dark Sigil Knight, but I guess if you're slick, you can sneak back to a mirror if you transform into a ring or something. That's all there is to that. Now we're moving on to D tier. Yes, this is the worst possible race for Dark Sigil Knight. Well, starting off with Scroom. Well, again, this is kind of applicable to anything. Scroom, everyone hates you. Everyone wants you to, you know, be grips. That's that's it. If you if a Scroom wasn't bad enough, you're now a Dark Sigil. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, Seraph, probably won't be seeing Seraph, but what you get in combat is immunity to White Flame, and you get more hunger honestly this is not that great for you as a dark sigil not nothing that great um talking about cameo cameo if you're a cameo dark sigil you have no mobility and you could get wiped by an oni if you have runes popped you can definitely run but if once you're in the combo you're pretty much stuck it is better than sigil because at least you can have mirrors to escape but um not really what you want to have Lastly, worst possible race for this is actually Riggin. Riggin is essentially uh, just useless. If you run out of runes, it becomes useless for a minute. And pretty much at day 40, which is a long time to wait, you get this thing called Flood. It's just one rune without the damage buffs, without anything like that. It's not very good, and I believe it's just a waste of a race. Pretty much, this is all my opinion on how Dark Sigil Knight performs. This is the tier list if you did not want to watch the rest of the video. And again, if you have any other opinions, let me know in the comments down below. Next video is going to be Blacksmith or Katana class. I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to do the sword classes and finish those up first. So look forward to that. And as always, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy my content. I miss the old punchy, straight out of cash punchy, dug it merge punchy, on his grind punchy, I hate the new punchy, the low views punchy, the always lose punchy, selling in twos punchy, I miss the meek punchy, helping the seas punchy, I gotta say, at that time I'd like the meat punchy, 
See, I invented punchy. It wasn't any punchy. And now I look and look around and there's so many punchy. I used to love punchy. I used to love punchy. I even had the tape of headset thought I was punchy. What if punchy made a video about punchy? Thought I missed the old punchy. Man, that'd be so punchy. That's all it was, punchy. We still love punchy. And I love you. I punchy loves punchy.